Hey guys, in my last video I talked briefly about Microsoft's track record with exclusives and how they've recently gone on an acquisition binge, taking in several new studios to bolster their first party lineup. 8 of the 15 Xbox studios were acquired on or after 2018, so that's certainly an impressive amount of new studios. And a lot of people view this as Microsoft's killer move, their quick way to match Sony's first party output, which paired with the power of the Series X, will beat PlayStation at their own game. However, we actually know a lot of the games those 15 studios are working on and if you see the whole picture, I'd argue that there's actually only a couple of things to get really excited about. First, let's start with the fact that Microsoft themselves have said that they will continue to support the Xbox One with their first party lineup. That means games like Halo Infinite will be cross-generation games and that will restrict their ability to go all out. We've seen it happen before with games like Destiny, Call of Duty and Battlefield. It seems like everyone wants to talk about the 12 teraflops of the Series X while forgetting that first party games need to also run on the 1.3 teraflop Xbox One at least for the next couple of years. And that will undoubtedly lead to untapped potential for those first party games. This is a good move for buyers of the old hardware, but not so much for people that are interested in the Series X. Of course, set games will run at a much higher resolution and frame rate in the new hardware, but what's most exciting about a new console are the games that can only truly run on the new hardware. I hope that you will agree with me on that one. So that said, let's take a look at those 15 first party studios and try to figure out what to expect from Microsoft's event in July. And please remember, if you enjoy watching this, check out the other videos on the channel and consider subscribing. Okay, let's try and go over the list real quick. First off, there's 343 Industries, currently working on Halo Infinite, which is supposed to release this year and will be a major release for the Series X. Though, as I said, it will also come out on PC and the original Xbox One, so I'm curious to see what the Series X brings to the table in terms of graphical and performance differences with the other platforms. It will be also very interesting to see if they had to make any major compromises to get this running on the old hardware as well. Next we have Compulsion Games, which released We Happy Few back in August 2018. According to their Twitter account, they are currently hiring people for their new project, so whatever it is they are working on is probably a ways off, especially if you consider the fact that they finished DLC for We Happy Few back in November 2019. Double Fine is currently working on Psychonauts 2, which is supposed to release this year for all platforms, including PlayStation 4. They also released a game called Rad in August 2019, and they are supposed to be working on an unannounced game which I think might get revealed or at least teased in July. However, as with Compulsion Games, I wouldn't expect anything too soon given that they still have one game to ship. In Exile, the developers of A Bard's Tale and Wasteland 2 are currently working on Wasteland 3, a strategy RPG which will also release this year on all platforms, the same as Psychonauts. They are also supposed to be working on an unannounced game, but same as before, I doubt we will see that anytime soon for the same exact reason. Mojang, which is arguably Microsoft's most important first party studio given how incredibly popular Minecraft is, will be releasing Microsoft Dungeons in a few days. Dungeons is a sort of Diablo-esque isometric dungeon crawler which looks very interesting and might be an awesome way to get people into Minecraft that want more of a traditional experience. Besides that, they seem to be focusing on Minecraft Earth and providing support for the several different versions of the main game. Ninja Theory is working on the recently released Bleeding Edge and Hellblade 2, so no surprises there and I seriously doubt that they could be working on a third game. I should note here that unlike most of the other games, Hellblade 2 has not been explicitly announced for the Xbox One just yet. Next up we have Obsidian which again is a fairly known entity. They released The Outer Worlds last year and they are currently working on Grounded, a survival game which is essentially a Honey I Shrunk the Kids video game. You play as a miniaturized teenager that has to survive in a backyard. As a concept, 
This is extremely cool, but having seen roughly one hour of gameplay, I can't really say that I'm looking forward to this, but then again, I'm not really into survival games either. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. This is supposed to be coming out on July 28th for the Xbox One, not sure if this will be released for the Series X. The rest of the team at Obsidian will probably continue to provide support and content for Pillars of Eternity 2 and DLC for the Outer Worlds. The Coalition worked on the recently released Gears Tactics and last year released both Gears 5 and Gears Pop. They are probably starting to work on something else, most likely a new Gears game or maybe a new IP, though I doubt it since they need a follow-up to Gears 5. Rare is still working on Sea of Thieves and also working on a new game called Everwild, which was announced last year. The trailer makes it really hard to tell what the game is about, but I bet we'll get some gameplay shown in a couple of months. I believe this game will be one of the focuses of the event in July. Turn 10 is supposed to be working on a new Forza game for the Series X, which will probably be the big graphical showcase for the platform during the event in July. Forza games have surpassed Gran Turismo as one of the best racing games out there, but they've been heavily criticized in the past for being overly monetized. Maybe that will change in the new game. They've used Forza in the past before to show off new consoles, so I bet that will be the case again for the Series X. And lastly, we have Undead Labs and World's Edge. The latter is supposed to be working on Age of Empires 4 together with Relic Entertainment, while Undead Labs, the creators of State of Decay, are working on State of Decay 3, which is rumored to be a persistent online game. I never played State of Decay, so I don't really know too much about it, but neither Age of Empires 4 nor State of Decay have release dates attached to them. So that's 12 studios that are either shipping a game this year or shipped games very recently, making any new unannounced games very unlikely to be released anytime soon. Now let's dive into the unknown. Playground Games developers of Forza Horizon are probably working on the next Horizon game, but they are seemingly also working on an RPG game for which some of the artwork has been leaked and it looks like some type of Victorian era fantasy game. They've posted job listings for an animation director, animation engineer, art director and AI engineer, so once again, whatever this game is, it's probably in early development at this point. And next we have the big one, the granddaddy. The initiative is easily the most intriguing studio at Microsoft. They've hired talent from some of the best studios in the world, including developers that worked on God of War and Uncharted 4, and they are said to be working on a quadruple A game, so the expectations are really high for this one. There have been some rumors that they're working on a new Perfect Dark game, which I don't know if that's the case or not, but whatever it is, I think Microsoft would be really smart to show it soon. The studio was founded on 2018 and they've been hiring people throughout 2019, so I seriously doubt anything will be ready until at least late 2021, given that most big games take at least three years to develop. This is Microsoft's clear attempt at taking the crown from Sony in terms of exclusives. So that's it. The 15th studio is Microsoft's publishing arm, so not much to say about really. We have 10 games that we either know about or are heavily speculated like a new Forza game. Then there are 5 or 6 games in development, with probably half of them in early stages of development. I won't go over games like Flight Simulator since they're not technically part of the 15 Xbox Studios. As I mentioned in my previous video, I don't think this lineup is extremely compelling. The biggest names here are Halo, Minecraft, Hellblade 2, Age of Empires and Forza. In terms of games in development, I personally find it really hard to get excited for a new game from Compulsion Games given that We Happy Few ended up being not very good, or a new RPG from Playground Games, given that they have only ever worked on car games. Now, I might be wrong, they might end up being amazing, 
and I actually hope they do because as I mentioned earlier I do have an APC and I like good games so if they turn out to be awesome games then I will enjoy playing them but it's not like these studios have proven themselves making extremely awesome RPG games and when you look at PlayStation being several years into the development of a new Horizon Zero Dawn game a new Spider-Man, a new God of War, that's pretty tough competition to go against. Horizon Zero Dawn is probably the one that is further into development since the original game launched in early 2017, so maybe that's a 2021 title. Spider-Man and God of War are probably either late 2021 or maybe even late 2022, giving a generous four years of development time. So my guess is the July event and all the hype around the Series X will focus on Halo, Everwild, third party games and first party games releasing this year like Psychonauts 2 and Hellblade 2. They might show off some CG trailer of what the initiative is doing as the final piece to get some hype or they might actually go all out and show off trailers and teasers of everything they have in development to make sure they get the message across that this generation will be different. Maybe the game from Compulsion is further in development than I think, but I wouldn't bet on it. I think whatever In Exile, Playground, The Initiative, The Coalition and Compulsion games are working on has to be 2022 at least. There are bound to be some surprises from other studios also developing games for Microsoft, but as far as the 15 first party studios go, I think this is a pretty fair assessment of what to expect. So right now, unless something really big comes from another studio, I really don't think that Microsoft has something to really go toe to toe against PlayStation in terms of exclusive games. One thing they might show at the event is the rumored second console that focuses on streaming. But given how many new games they already have coming this year and for the Xbox Series X launch, I doubt that they can add much more to the lineup unless it's a new studio acquisition, which could certainly be possible. Alright, let me know what you think about this video. Do you think there's something else Microsoft might show? Something else to get the hype going around the Series X? If you do, please leave a comment down below. Alright, that will be all for now. I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe I will catch you in the next one.